Hey everyone, this is Steve with Fuelit, and today we're going to go over the installation of the Flex Fuel Kit on our 2017 Mark 7 GTI that we recently acquired as our new project vehicle. Anyway, so to start with on this, first thing we're going to want to do is relieve the fuel pressure and the fuel lines. So we'll want to pull the fuse to the low pressure pump start the car, let it run until that pressure is relieved. The car may or may not die. If it doesn't die and you've let it run for a couple of minutes, then go ahead and turn it off. And there won't be much pressure in the lines, but there will still be a little bit of pressure in the lines. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll pull off the cover of the fuse box. And then on the underside of that cover, got a little cheater fuse clip we can use there. And it is the 15 amp fuse at the very top of the bank closest to the engine. So we'll reach in there and pull that fuse out. Then we'll go ahead and come around to the car, jump in and start it up. Just let it run for a minute here. Okay, so we don't have much in the way of fuel pressure in the lines. You can tell if the car doesn't die, you can tell because it'll kind of start stumbling a little bit um, because there isn't su fuel, sufficient fuel pressure. So we'll go ahead and turn it off. Now there will still be some residual fuel in the fuel lines and maybe a little bit of fuel pressure as well. So be cautious of that when you are you know, taking the fuel line off. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is move the engine cover, like so. We'll set that aside. Okay, and then we're gonna be replacing this stock fuel line here that comes from the source and over to the HPFP. We've already had the kit on this car. We've been testing it for a while now. So some of the components are already going to be in place, but we're going to show you the installation of them, show you the components and so on. It's a very simple, easy, straightforward installation. So to begin with, the tools that we're going to need for this, a set of edge cutters. Um, these edge cutters we're probably just going to make available on our website too, because you'll need them for the Odeker clamps and it also makes it easier to get the stock fuel line off. Just a little tweaker screwdriver a 13 millimeter socket, and of course, the ratchet. And then with the kit, we have the ethanol sensor. These are Bluetooth. All of them are Bluetooth. Um, some of them are, you can get it in a zero to five volt frequency, or range, I guess, and or a 50 to 150 hertz frequency. The difference between the two is, as I said, both are Bluetooth. However, the zero to five volt is compatible with the JB4. So if you're running a JB4, you can then plug it into the JB4 with the zero to five, five volt output and the JB4 will be able to see your ethanol content as well. If you're using another style of ECU, maybe you can plug in the raw signal from the ethanol analyzer and your ECU already takes and converts that signal. In order for us to use it with the JB4, we have to convert it to a zero to five volt signal. And then also, of course, to the Bluetooth signal that you can pick up with your Apple or Android device. So we've got our analyzer. We've got our two fuel lines with our three eighths inch connections. We've got two Odeker clamps for securing our fuel lines to the fuel line input and then also to the HPFP. And we've got our ethanol sensor and then our JB4 wire adapter, and then our wiring harness that will connect to the analyzer and um, feed into the supply power ground and so on. Our analyzer just literally connects to the sensor just like that. So that said, we're gonna go ahead and remove the stock fuel lines. So we'll grab a towel here to catch any of the residual fuel. Suck that under there. Just take your edge cutters together like so. And like I said, now be cautious because there could be some residual fuel pressure in there. So we're gonna be mm -hmm. trying to take it off real easy. 
Okay, so you can see there's just a little bit of a spray there. So be cautious of that, okay? Okay, so that's the HPF piece side. Get our pliers off of there. And then it just unclips like so. I'm trying to be gentle and we try and get our residual fuel to spill into our towel here. And then for this one here, this is why we have the tweaker screwdriver. Just go ahead, push down here, and then you can separate it. And then that line comes out. Disconnect here. And then again, with our edge cutters, we've got the same style of little spring clip. Push it together. it off okay unclip here get as much fuel as we can out of here before we feed it through here All right, and then we just set that aside. Now for our new fuel lines, go ahead, the short one goes to the HPFP. We grabbed our Odeker clamp, and then we'll grab our edge cutters again so we can crimp those. Get this unhooked from here. Okay, come over to the HPFP, push that hose on in place. Get your Odeker clamp. Um, and I would recommend doing it about eighth of an inch, no more than a quarter of an inch from the end of the barbed fitting there. And then go ahead and try and get you a good view of that. Just go ahead and squeeze that tight, pretty much as tight as you can, like so. Okay. Now we can do, again, our Odeker clamp. Do the same thing here with the supply line. Push that all the way on. Our clamp here. And I'm sorry, I should have fed this underneath that hose first. That way you're not fighting that later. Don't have to crimp the hose to try and get it past it. Go ahead and slide that on. Put your Odeker clamp in place. Spread these out good. Ah. Okay. And again, just like about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch from the edge. Squeeze that nice and tight. We're good there. Clamp that in place. Clamp the other one in place here. We'll go ahead and grab our sensor and analyzer. Take the little caps off. In this car, we've already got a JB4 installed, so that's the line that you see there. This goes ahead and just clicks in place. And then as I mentioned, on this car, we've already been running this for a little while. So we've already run our wiring harness that comes through and it just comes down around here over to the battery. So we just ran it underneath here, underneath the charge pipe and then over to the battery area. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Feed that over there. And then for the line to the HPFP, Plug that in. Pop the fuel line into these little clamps here. Okay, so that's it for our fuel line. Our fuel line is installed. Everything is good to go there. Now, to go over the electrical connections. This was the wiring harness and this was what you saw me plug in right here. And then as I said, we ran the electrical around underneath here. 
and we're running a JB4. <laughs> so we also integrated with JB4. If you're not running a JB4, all you do is hook, connect power and ground, and that's all you need for the Bluetooth. Okay, so our wires came over, they came down here. This is where we have our JB4. So I'll pull this up so you can see here. Now on the JB4, or actually I'll go over that in just a second. So coming from the analyzer, we have our harness, it's right here. You can see that it fed through right here. And then it comes up right here. So our red goes to power, and it just so happens that there's a nice little groove right here, hopefully you can see that well, that you can kind of run the wire through, and it comes up here into the fuse bank, and then just take the end of this wire and literally just push it into the little fuse holder for the fuel pump. So we have the, this is for the 15 amp here. Plug it in there. And then when you put the fuse back in, then that's gonna crimp that in place, okay? Now for the ground side, if you can see right down in here, there is the battery hold down bracket and that's a 13 millimeter socket. So I'll go ahead and take it off just to show you. Okay, so you can see where the bolt that holds down that bracket and then of course our ground ring terminal there. So we'll go ahead and put that back in place. For the JB4 side, if you are using a JB4, this wire will plug into pin 16 of the DB25. We already have ours plugged in, but we'll go through this here and show you exactly what we're talking about. So just use your tweaker screwdriver and pull the case off. The JB4 DB, this is the JB4 DB25 here. And on the back side of it, you can see there's a black wire that comes in. So this is pins one through 13 on top, and the purple wire is pin 14, the brown wire is pin 15, and the black wire that we have inserted right here is pin 16. So that just plugs right into the DB25, and then we just connect the pigtail to our harness here. And that concludes that. So then we'll put this back in place, put our cover back on, Go ahead and put the JB4 right back down here. That's that. Now that we have our fuel lines in place, we can go ahead and put our fuse back in. Like so. We can take and put our little clippers here back in so we have them for next time and then put the cover back on our battery box, or excuse me, fuse box. Okay, so that's that. That is the installation. The installation is complete. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and turn the car on, verify that there are no leaks. Check our fuel lines. Fuel lines are good. We want to go ahead and put our cover back on. Put our little JB4 connector back in there. Grab our cover. The cover has four grommets on it. And then it's also got a couple of indentations on it to kind of help you line it back up. So about like so. Push the cover back in place. That part's done. Okay, so now that we have put the cover on, everything is done there, we can go ahead and get our shop light out of the way here.
close the hood. Come in here. Now, there's no check engine light, but we've done this a couple times now because of the testing and so on. When you run the car out of gas, sometimes you will get a check engine light. Once you could or reconnect everything, get the car running again, drive it for a little bit, that check engine light will clear. Or you can clear it with an OBD2 uh, cable and you know your phone, whatever. Or the JB4 will, can also clear it. So now that we have it connected, we'll go ahead and open up our fuel it app and we'll connect and as you can see we're at E37 and then also if you were running a JB4 you can take your laptop and we've run our JB4 cable through into this little cubby here that we can keep it for logging and hopefully you get a good view of this and we'll go through these settings real quick. All right, sorry about that. All right, so we open up the JB4 and then we select settings. And then you can see that COM4 is available. We're already on COM4 because we've been connected to this vehicle. We select file, connect. Okay, and then you can tell it's connected because the car's running and you can see your RPMs fluctuating there. Now, for the JB4 to read that signal, since it does not have a dedicated um, E85 input at this time, it's going in under the meth channel, it'll be labeled as meth. And so for the meth channel to see it properly, meth is generally, meth signal scaling is generally set to zero. So you'll need to change that to 100. And then, then select save. And then we can go back to our logging. And you'll see that the RPMs are frozen right now. It's not actually logging because we've saved and we wrote to the ECU for the JB4. So it doesn't actually, that, that stops the logging process. So you can say data logging start and then if you look down here under meth you'll see that it says 36 so that means we're at 30 36 percent ethanol if you have any questions feel free to email us at info at fuel it.com pretty much just like our logo fuel it.com or visit us at www.fuelit.com Thank you very much for watching. And again, that was the DIY for installing the Fuelit ethanol sensor and analyzer on the 2017 Mark 7 GTI. Thanks again.